By 1552, it was evident that Edward was dying. He started out robust, but he faded. And we believe he was dying of bone tuberculosis. But whatever the case, Northumberland induced him before he died to name his daughter-in-law, Jane Grey, as heir to Edward's throne. Well, Edward died in 1553. He was only 16. Northumberland immediately rose in the House of Lords and proclaimed Jane Grey the Queen. But that wasn't the way Parliament or Lords understood the Act of Settlement. Henry had very specifically laid this out in his will. Edward Mary Elizabeth. Well, the supporters of Mary, known as Mary Tudor, brought Mary, who'd been under house arrest under the Northumberland's regime, brought her into London. And, of course, the Londoners supported her, proclaiming him Queen Mary the First. And, of course, the crowds were so big that Jane Grey and her uh, father-in-law, Nor the Duke of Northumberland, were overwhelmed, taken captive, and put in the Tower of London. Mary was proclaimed Queen as an act of Parliament now, and nine days later, Jane Grey and her father-in-law were executed. Poor Jane, I always feel sorry for her. She didn't have a damn thing to do with this or to say about it. These loathsome male relatives did it all to her, so have some compassion. Mary Tudor was the first female ruler in English modern history. She was 37 years old. She was small or slight, red-haired. She took her father's coloring, freckly red hair complexion pale skin, and, uh, and rather uh, she felt um, concerned about her existence. She had a terrible life. The minute her mother, Catherine, had fallen from grace, she had been declared illegitimate. I told you this. And no sooner than that, when Elizabeth was born to Henry's second wife, uh, Mary was forced to be her lady-in-waiting. Here she was, a teenager, and she had to serve this baby stepsister of hers and of course that she resented that but she never would abjure her Catholicism Mary Tudor remained a, a, a devout Catholic all her life nothing could shake it well she lived in some anxiety during Edward's reign but uh, it was worse under Northumberland he placed her under house arrest and threatened her with with execution as Queen Mary said it's my goal to restore the church to England the one true mother church. And she set about doing this. Uh, she had suspected her stepsister Elizabeth of treason, and that was a difficult arrangement I'll get into in a minute. Uh, the Pope's authority, a year later, it only took her a year, the Pope's authority was being reestablished. The churches in England were being cleansed of their Protestant ministers, and Catholic priests were being brought in to take over. The heresy laws were revived, and anybody who wasn't a Roman Catholic was being persecuted. Unfortunately, rebellions resulted, uh, uh, religious ones, and Mary purged them uh, harshly, and she got the sobriquet for doing it as Bloody Mary because of the persecutions. Now, she was no bloodier than who went before or who came after, I have to tell you that, but you guess that. Then the second thing she did was announce her marriage to the uh, Infant of Spain, the, the, prince, uh, reg uh, the, re the prince who would be Prince of Wales in England, uh, the reigning prince, Philip. Uh, Charles was his father, and uh, Philip would be king of Spain one day. Well, when she did this, there was a vast rebellion in Kent, the Kentish areas to the west, northwest of London. They rose in rebellion. Their leader was Tom Wyatt and they marched on London. We were not going to have a Spanish king consort or whatever he would be called, or a Spanish heir, which of course would be the result. They call it Spanish. And the rebellion was big, but Mary went down before her officers. They had, of course, the London was all up in arms, and she gave a very dynamic speech, got them all excited, and they rushed out to meet the Wyatt Rebellion, and of course they won the day. Wyatt was captured and, of course, hanged. 
for his efforts along with a great many other people. That meant that Mary's side was still winning, if you will, and she took sides with Spain in a Franco-Spanish war. See, England was still busy muddling up the big elements in, in Europe, and as a result of this short war, England lost Calais, her last foothold in Europe. And poor Mary's reign is always stigmatized for having done this. The English always claim that was hers. She announced in 1555, I think it was, that uh, she married Prince Philip, by the way. Did I say that? She announced her marriage, and she did marry him. He came over to England, and she announced she was pregnant. And so Philip st st stood around until the results were in. And uh, oh, he, he and his courtiers were very arrogant. They don't say English were all trash, but uh, it was a good pet a terre for the Spanish to have England. Well, her pregnancy the next year, by the next year, was proven to be a false one. There would be no child. So Philip took his courtiers and went back to Spain. Never saw Mary again. Had the marriage annulled. Well, Mary was terribly upset by this and depressed. Uh, she was demoralized by all these rebellions. and The whole thing was very ugly. Her, her relationship with her stepsister, Elizabeth, had been very difficult. She was going to have Elizabeth executed. Elizabeth then made nice, nice. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And, and uh, Mary accepted her. There wasn't any execution, but it was an ugly thing until it was over. And it was over the next year, 58, when at the age of 42, Mary Tudor contracted flu and died. <laughs>